Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Medieval Reader. So today I want to talk about two wonderful introductions to some very important theologians. So the first is the biography of Augustine of Hippo by Peter Brown. I think I have mentioned this book on my channel before, but I really want to talk more about why this book has really stuck with me for such a long time and why I recommend it to people. Um, but really the book that inspired me to make this video is what I'm currently reading, which is Thomas Aquinas, A Portrait by Dennis Turner. There you go. Um, and this one is about Thomas Aquinas. Um, these are two very important theologians in the West. So the first book I want to talk about is Peter Brown's biography of Augustine of Hippo. I will put a better picture in the corner because the edition that I have is a library copy and it has clearly been read over and over again. I think it has even been dropped in water. It has some water damage. I don't know if you can tell. Um, Peter Brown is a leading scholar of late antiquity and early Christian studies. He wrote this biography of Augustine of Hippo in 1968. So it's been quite a few decades since this book came out. However, in second edition was published in 2000 with two epilogues. One epilogue is Brown talking about the aspects of Augustine's thought that he did not mention in the book, even though there was scholarship about it in 1968. And the second epilogue deals with scholarship since 1968 and how that affects what he wrote. Even though it is somewhat dated, it is still a great introduction because not only does it engage with the scholarship of the day about Augustine, but it's also incredibly readable and engaging. There were times when I felt like Augustine was preaching in his basilica in Hippo. But who is Augustine? So St. Augustine or St. Augustine, as he's sometimes um, called, um, Augustine's probably a better um, pronunciation, was the Bishop of Hippo Regis, which is in present-day Algeria in the late 4th and early 5th centuries. Um, he is arguably the most influential theologian in Western Christianity. Uh, for example, he, the doctrine of original sin was formulated by Augustine at the end of his life. But his most famous work is his Confessions, which is his autobiography. If you've never read the Confessions, you should definitely do so because it has value on a literary level, being one of the first autobiographies ever written. Now, Peter Brown will talk about the Confessions at length in his biography. Um, and he looks at Augustine's relationship to his mother, whom he claims is responsible for his conversion. She prayed for him for many years. Um, Augustine was born to a Christian mother and a pagan father, and uh, he became a rhetor. So a rhetor is someone who taught rhetoric, and he was actually quite successful. In fact, he owned a villa, so he was um, quite wealthy, but he wasn't the best at school, so he got a lot of breaks um, and made friends with quite a lot of influential people, so that he ended up in Milan being a rhetor where he met Ambrose. But before that, he was a Manichae for 10 years, and the Manichaeans were a dualistic religion that separated the world into matter and spirit, the material world being considered evil and under um, an evil spirit, and then the spiritual being good, and therefore the religion really emphasized um, escaping from the body. So he was a Manichae hearer for 10 years, and then he had this conversion due to the bishop Ambrose, in Milan who baptized him and eventually he was ordained uh, bishop of Hippo and um, he produced I think something like 50 million words are attributed to Augustine. He, while he was delivering sermons because he was so popular people were just writing out his sermons as he was giving them. Um, a few years ago actually a number of sermons were discovered in some medieval manuscripts that are now being studied. Um, and Augustine's is, is a very controversial figure because he um, participated in some heresy hunting, um, particularly uh, towards two groups. One were the Donatists, and the Donatists were a North African um, schismatic sect 
that had very strict purity laws and Augustine embraced the imperial church um, and so he actually um, helped in the involvement of their persecution and then the Pelagians at the end of his life um, so when I say it's a very compelling biography it's not that Peter Brown hides the very problematic elements in Augustine's life it's simply that when you read this biography, you will understand why Augustine has been so influential and he will feel so familiar. Because in many ways, if you are a Christian, particularly, many of his beliefs are very familiar because they are your beliefs. <laughs> and um, it's, it's really interesting to trace them back and see you know, how they were really developed uh, by Augustine in his writings. Brown certainly assumes that you have some background knowledge in Christianity, uh, but even if you don't, I think he does explain things very well. There are moments in this book when I just feel like I've known this man forever. Um, he does tend to have very surprising views, uh, especially for somebody who was a heresy hunter. I would not expect him to have um, some of the more tolerant views that he had when it came to religious life, for example. He did live in a monastic community, but he didn't have the same kind of strict monastic values uh, that some of his contemporaries, like Jerome, did. I think that Augustine of Hippo is a wonderful place to begin if you've only maybe read the Confessions, or even if you don't know anything about Augustine and you want to understand why he's so important, and want something that is scholarly but readable. Definitely a great place to begin. Um, and in fact, I've loved it so much that I'm currently rereading it. It's a book that um, has stuck with me because of its very vivid imagery. And um, Brown really allows Augustine to speak for himself. Because he wrote so much, there's always something in his writings that resonates with the reader. Uh, for me, it's the very human elements. Um, it's when Augustine will talk about certain practices in his parish, in, in the cathedral where he's preaching, which give you an idea about how Christians of the day worshipped um, or what was going on, you know, is very in the moment because there were scribes who were just writing down these sermons as he was giving them. So if he mentions something very contemporary, that's in his sermon, which is, I think, kind of cool if you like history. But so yeah, Augustine of Hippo by Peter Brown is the book that I recommend for people interested in learning more about this 4th century bishop. And now I want to talk about Thomas Aquinas, A Portrait by Dennis Turner. I will use an image again because it has a glossy library cover. Um, Dennis Turner is a professor at Yale University in historical theology. Um, he held positions at Cambridge and, and other leading institutions in uh, historical theology. Thomas Aquinas was um, a 13th century theologian. He was the master of theology at the University of Paris, which had only very recently been established. He was a Dominican um, only like 50 years after Dominic established the Order of Preachers, which is also known as the Dominican Order. Thomas Aquinas is the archetypal scholastic. He is usually what comes to mind when people think about scholasticism. And now I know what you're thinking, but scholasticism, didn't they count angels on pinheads? Actually, they never counted angels on pinheads. That's completely a myth. However, they can be extremely dense and Aquinas can be too, which is why I recommend Dennis Turner's book because he explains very well the aspects of Aquinas' thought that at least Turner thinks are ones that we might find really interesting. He does talk about the major elements of the Summa Theologica, which is his major work of theology. Um, he talks about how it's constructed, but most importantly, Turner situates Aquinas's thought in the 13th century university environment in which it was written. And that is so unique. There are thousands and thousands of books on Aquinas, every kind of commentary you can imagine. But not many books talk about Aquinas as a man who lived in the 13th century, who was engaged with particular theological debates at the University of Paris with the Augustinians, 
whom he had some issues with. I was particularly moved by the discussion about Aquinas' view on friendship and love because his work tends to be distanced and divorced from the man. We don't really get to see a lot of his humanity coming through because his Summa Theologica was supposed to be a university textbook, so it's not really about the author. Still, his view about friendship is quite beautiful, how friendship um, somehow models our relationship with God. What Turner shows again and again is that Aquinas was quite a materialist, and what he means by that is that in comparison to the Augustinians who tended to divide the soul from the body, Aquinas thinks of the soul and the body as a composite. He thinks of the person as being both soul and body together so that you're not encouraged to separate the two, and he doesn't, and that is really at the heart of his work. It's really hard to find such a concise introduction to Aquinas that is compelling. Um, now, it is true that some of the philosophical discussions can be really dense if you have no background in philosophy, um, but I always think that reading philosophy can be a good intellectual exercise, and I think for the kind of book that it is, it is pretty readable. I mean, I don't consider myself a Thomist. I don't know Aquinas' thought very much. I've only read a few of his articles, but I really like his perspective, and it was just great to see it presented and contextualized. So yeah, Thomas Aquinas' portrait and the biography of Augustine of Hippo are both excellent introductions to Thomas Aquinas and Augustine respectively. Um, let me know if you've read any of these, and I will talk to you later. Bye now.